everyone, welcome back. We're back again with more Pottermore. Yay! And yes, I'm also wearing the same exact outfit because it is the same exact day, literally five minutes apart. <laughs> so last time I was sorted into the house of Hufflepuff and I realized that I should have gotten my wand first because there's one down here that says discover your wand. And in the books and the movie, you have to get your wand before you can go to Hogwarts. That's like rule number one. So we're getting my wand today, guys. I'm excited. To ensure we find the perfect wand for you, it's very important that you answer the following questions honestly. First of all, would you describe yourself as average height, tall, short, um, I'm five four and a half, so technically I'm short. <laughs> um, and your eyes, dark brown or black? Who would have black eyes? That's scary. Brown, hazel, blue. Do I have blue, blue gray. I'm blue gray. All right. Was the day on which you were born an even number, an odd number? It was an odd number. The twenty first. Do you most pride yourself on your optimism, determination, resilience, imagination, intelligence, originality, kindness? I would say imagination, right? No, I would say kindness. Um, I would say my kindness, because I'm pretty kind, I think. I like to think I'm kind, I hope. <laughs> um, traveling down a deserted road, you reach a crossroads. Do you continue? Left towards the sea, right towards the castle. Um... Or a head towards the forest. Hmm. I would go right towards the castle because there's probably people there whereas if you go to the sea you could drown and no one would know and if you go in the forest I guarantee you'll be eaten by a bear. Um, do you most fear fire, darkness, isolation, small spaces, heights, um, it's either heights small spaces or isolation. I have three. Can I pick three, please? <laughs> um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If it hollers, let it go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. My mother told me to pick the very best one and you are it. All right. So we are going with heights. In a chest of magical artifacts, which would you choose? Ornate mirror, dusty bottle, golden key, silver dagger, bound scroll, glittering jewel, black glove. I'd go with the glittering jewel, right? Although the key was also a good one. Nope, we're going jewel. I liked. I'm like a raccoon. I like shiny things. <laughs> Red wood with a unicorn hair core, nine and three quarters, and quite bendy flexibility. Look at my wand. That's cute. It's got like a little braid around it right here. And then I like the little detail there. 
I wish it was straighter though. Like I have an issue with just just the artist in me wants it to be straight, like hanging on the wall. But oh well, I like it. It's cute. It's more about my wand. Ranch. Redwood. Wand quality redwood is in short supply, yet constant demand due to its reputation for bringing good fortune to its owner. Ooh. As, it, as is usually the case with wand lore, the general populace have the truth back to front. Redwood wands are not themselves luck lucky, but are strongly attached to witches and wizards who already possess the admirable ability to fall on their feet, to make the right choice, and to snatch advantage from catastrophe. The combination of such a witch or wizard with a redwood wand is always intriguing, and I generally expect to hear of exciting exploits when I send this special pairing out of my workshop. Ah, Unicorn. Ooh. Unicorn hair generally produces the most consistent magic. Good. <laughs> and is least subject to fluctuations and blockages. Wands with unicorn cores are generally the most difficult to turn to the dark arts. Yes! <laughs> uh, they are the most faithful of all wands and usually remain strongly attached to their first owner. Irrespective of whether he or she was an accomplished witch or wizard, um, minor disadvantages of unicorn hair are that they do not make the most powerful wands, although the wand wood may compensate and that they are prone to melancholy if seriously mishandled, meaning that the hair may die and need replacing. Oh, I'll take good care of my wand. Um, nine and three-fourths in length. Uh, most wands will be in the range of between nine and 14 inches, while I have sold extremely short wands, eight inches and under, and very long wands, over 15 inches. They are exceptionally rare. In the latter case, a physically pecul peculiarity, peculiarity, I can't speak today, guys, um, demanded the excessive wand length. However, abnormally short wands usually select those in whose character something is lacking rather than because they are physically undersized. Many small witches and wizards are chosen by longer wands. So, I'm a smaller witch and wizard, I'm a smaller witch, therefore my wand is a bit longer than normal, is what it's saying, basically. Uh, and then wand flexibility or rigidity denotes the degree of adaptability. <laughs> of adaptability and willingness to change possessed by the wand and owner pair, although again the factor, this factor ought to not be considered separately from the wand, wood, core, and length, nor the owner's life experience and style of magic, all of which will combine to make the wand in question unique. Cool! Yay! We have a wand! <laughs> and that is where I'm going to end this episode. There's one more one coming that will be for another house to be sorted into, and yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe if you haven't already. You can do that by clicking the word subscribe right up there. And to see my previous video, just click the link right over there, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Which, with the <sighs> That's me! The combination... Oh my god, I can't speak today, guys. 